Hi everybody, welcome to this Timeline documentary. My name is Dan Snow and here I am in a Lancaster bomber cockpit, one of the few remaining Lancasters from the Second World War, to tell you about my new history channel. It's called History Hit, it's like Netflix for history. Hundreds of history documentaries on there and interviews with many of the world's best historians. Follow the information below this film or just search online for History Hit and make sure you use the code TIMELINE to get a special introductory offer. Now enjoy this show. This is Littlington in Cambridgeshire. On the face of it, it's a quintessential English village. You see the medieval church over there, and right behind the camera over here, there's the post office and village store, and round this corner here, the village pub. I think I know a few people who'll be interested in that. So far, so what? Well, there's more to this place than meets the eye because the people of Littlington believe their village may hide one of the best-kept Roman secrets in Britain. And with good reason. 180 years ago, a local vicar put a trench in this field and decided it was the site of one of the biggest Roman homes in Britain. But not only that, another dig about the same time claimed to have found a beautiful walled Roman cemetery a few hundred yards away, probably part of the same complex. So you've got this massive villa, an elaborate cemetery. This stuff ought to be in the history books. Only problem is, nearly all the records have been lost. I think it's time we spent three days putting Roman Littlington back on the map, don't you? The area of Cambridgeshire we'll be digging over the next three days is a bit of a Roman puzzle. There's been very little modern archaeological investigation here. In fact, almost all we know is based on digs carried out over a hundred years ago. But if we're to believe those century-old endeavours, then the jewels in the crown have to be the cemetery and villa recorded at Littlington on this 1836 plan. It's got this amazing, tantalising plan of the Roman villa here, and we don't know where this chap is getting his information from. We, we have no record, apart from this, of any previous excavations at the villa. Uh, what we do know from this is that people thought that the villa was of absolutely massive size. I mean, this is nearly 200 metres across. Which, if you look in the paddock here, 200 metres, well, in, in any one direction, could virtually fill up the entire paddock. And of course, we don't actually know that we're in this paddock entirely. It could be that they actually run in underneath these houses over here. There's just so much that like Helen says that we just don't know. What's your instinct about what we've got here? <laughs> I, do, I couldn't even begin to guess at this point in time. I mean, it's, it's clear there's something important here. But this is a palatial building, and we don't have villas like that in this area. I mean, we've got some nice villas, but nothing on this scale. Well, the first thing we need to do is actually find out just how accurate this plan is. Because if it's correct, then we could be looking at one of the biggest villas ever discovered in Britain. But even if the gentlemen amateurs of the 19th century hadn't reported Littlington, I'm sure we'd have ended up here one day. Lovely. That is a very nice example of a Roman hairpin. Because the locals have been finding loads of Roman stuff all over the village for decades. So that's huge Roman tile. I mean, look at it. That's got to be part of a Roman floor. Got to be. Including a lot of stuff in this small copse to the south of our main field. We found these lying on the surface. So we started to, to pick them up and ended up with a whole bag right. full. Wow. We've also got here a piece of Roman hypercourse tile, so that's central heating. And mosaic and heating tiles suggest a Roman bathhouse. Secret garden, this is absolutely crazy. Which is just the sort of thing you'd expect to find right attached right. to a grand Roman villa. I'm glad you're showing us a way in. Yeah, right. can you show us a way out again as well? So while we wait for a geophys target in the main field, we're going to have a quick rummage in the cops to see how it fits into our Roman story. Um. Oh, you're not using saws, Phil. You're going right? straight for just bulldozing. Well, no, this out is the way. this is. And that means we need to do a spot of light deforestation. That's better, isn't it? 
<laughs> Where do you want to put it, though? I don't... <laughs> <laughs> so, with finds from around the village and evidence of something quite substantial in this copse, it would seem that whatever was here covered a large area. Oh, look. There's another one. Oh, Tessera. little Tessera, Anna. Yeah. There's another one here. It's obviously part of a, a Roman pavement. I mean, whether, wow. it's, whether it's in situ or whether it's just been dumped in here, there's a sort of million-dollar question. And a villa is the sort of archaeological target that should positively scream its presence on the GFIS results. Oh, boy. Well, we're not seeing a villa in that data. We're not seeing anything like the responses that we should be getting. Oh, dear. Well, that's not the sort of response I was expecting. But there's a chance we've asked him to geofizz the wrong part of the field. Because, as Stuart and Helen are discovering, the antiquarian map may not be as reliable as we first hoped. There are bits of this map which actually look fine in relation to, to the later mapping, and there are bits which look completely wrong. Oh. It, <laughs> it's like a half-right map is this at the moment. But when you get further south here towards this road junction, this is where it starts to go a bit, a bit wayward because that's quite some distance from the modern south end of the village. This map is from just one of many digs carried out here by antiquarians, vicars, doctors and the like, who were the predecessors of today's archaeologists. But although their intentions were honourable, their record-keeping could be somewhat poor. Now, in 1913, the Cambridge Antiquarian Society comes to Littlington to visit Mr McLaren at Manor Farm because he's found a bit of a villa and they view the, the, uh, um, the excavations and they have tea in the garden. It all sounds <laughs> lovely. Do we have the report? Not yet, and, and in fact, I think we may never find one because they don't seem to have been terribly impressed at what they found. They said, although there was an extensive building, there were only foundations left and um, finds were only really pottery. It seems crazy to me that we've got all these late 19th, early 20th century references to this site, but really no tangible written evidence. What are we going to do? Well, I think we've just got to keep digging through all the references and see if there's something buried somewhere in a library we can come up with. Uh, although 1914 is not a great time to be embarking on post-excavation analyses, and I think that report may never come to light. So we still haven't got a target for our first trench in the main field. Phil, Raksha, what have you got down in the woods? But our scratching around in the cops has just produced some lovely Roman archaeology. There's just enough here to indicate that we do have a floor and that that's where they come from. This really is a cracking little discovery, although it's much too early to say what kind of building this stretch of paving belongs to. In the meantime, there's still the small matter of the main field, where, according to the antiquarian map, there should be a massive, positively palatial villa. We've done a really big chunk, both magnetically, all over this field and in the paddock on that side, and magnetically we're seeing old ditches that are visible on the tithe map. There's Can you see anything else there that might be a Roman villa? Nothing. If there was a major villa where we've surveyed, I'm sure we'd see it. So what are we going to do, just keep geophysing the rest of the field? Yeah, I think we keep looking. This is getting so frustrating. Normally, by now, we've put in at least one trench, but it's lunchtime day one, and all we've done is fertled around in that copse. We can't start digging because we haven't got any clear targets. Help. This is Littlington in Cambridgeshire, and this morning, in this field, I was offered not just a Roman villa, but a palatial Roman villa, 300 foot by 500 foot. And the big news is... We can't find it. See that geophys? There's nothing there at all except these odd trackway things. We can't even put in a trench because we haven't got any targets. Where's my villa? <laughs> Look, we're doing pretty well. We've got stuff over there in the cops. We've got a tessellated pavement there. But I will admit we haven't so far got a massive villa in this part of the field. So what do we do? We're not going to give up. Um, 
Instead of going for the digital method, though, we're going to try the analog method and actually trust to the maps and see what they come up with. What does he mean by the analog? Method? I don't know. But he's looking at me when he's saying <laughs> it. <laughs> okay. At the moment, the, the only real evidence we've we've got that ever was a villa in this field is this one plan that was made in the early 19th century showing what looks like a courtyard villa. So what we're looking at, if if we accept this as it is, and we don't know how reliable it is, that there is a rectangular villa type structure extending down towards that copse under those houses up there and, and back up if we take that as gospel and it's the only thing we've got at the moment which actually says there might be a villa in this field so our first trench in this massive field goes in on the basis of a single 170 year old map It's hardly the most scientifically robust target we've ever had, but then again... Hold them in. Hey! What's that? Bit of Roman roof tile. After the frustration of this morning, it's good to know that we seem to be in the right place, in spite of a complete lack of geophys evidence. Look at this underneath. Back in the cops, our earlier discovery of a Roman floor means that this is also now the location of a full-on excavation. Oh! Oh! Ah, no, look <laughs> at that. That is... That's the edge, I mean, look at the elaborate alignment. The alignment mm. of that wall is exactly... Yeah. ..the same alignment as our pavement here. So we're going to put in a couple of trenches in the copse to see if there is potentially a bathhouse buried under all this shrubbery. There is actually a sort of linear comes through on the geophysics at a funny angle there, Ian. While for good luck, Stuart's putting in a second trench in the main field to see if Phil's walls and pavement continue towards the rest of the villa. Number one. <laughs> In the space of a couple of hours, we've gone from twiddling our thumbs to being stretched to the limit. How about that? That's the Roman floor. That, that looks like a mosaic floor. Okay. But it seems to be worth it, even if it's just to justify to the landowners why we're trashing their cops. We've got a doorway. A door? Yeah. Really? Check it out. Oh! oh, oh isn't that you. fantastic? Oh, that's brilliant. <laughs> ah. <laughs> and it's even, it's even invented, isn't it? Absolutely. So there we go, a Roman doorway. Absolutely brilliant. The evidence we're finding in here certainly suggests we may be coming down onto something posh enough to belong to a high-status Roman villa. Ooh, that's painted wall plaster. It's got blue and green on as well. That's absolutely fantastic. Or maybe I spoke too soon. Just after lunch, we put a trench in over here, even though we couldn't see anything in the geophys, because Stuart had worked out that this on the 19th century drawing is where the villa should be. So we thought, well, we'd dig it and see if the antiquarians were right. Although, Matt, I can't quite see a villa there. That's because there isn't a villa in there. In fact, there's not even the remnants of a villa anywhere nearby here. So what's this recess here? Well, what we've got here is what the geophysics showed, which was a great big linear coming all the way through, back up there. There's a parallel one just beyond the edge of the trench there, and we've also got another ditch coming straight across it that just way. Just a minute. Isn't that Roman tile? That is Roman tile. I mean, we've got a couple of bits of Roman pottery. So? But it doesn't tell us there is a villa here. I mean, look at it. It's broken, it's rounded. It could have been dragged from a very long way away by the plough. It could have come from anywhere. It tells us there's a Roman building in the vicinity. It doesn't tell us, that, it doesn't tell us anything about what's going on in this trench. The only recognisable archaeology in this trench is a medieval trackway. There's absolutely no trace of anything structural slap bang in the middle of where we expected to find our record-breaking villa. Frankly, this is a bit of a disaster. It may only be the afternoon of day one, but I feel I need to have some serious words with our site director. I'm going to ask Ben the question that no one else seems to have the bottle to ask you. Suppose there isn't a villa here at all. 
I think we've definitely got a villa. I mean, you don't get that amount of building material, you don't get the tessellated pavement, the wall plaster, all these finds without there being a villa here. There, there must be a villa here. What about the one tangible piece of evidence we've got, the cops? What's going on there? Clearly an important building or part of a building. I mean, have, have a look at this. I mean, we could be talking about a, a bathhouse, for example, typically a bit peripheral or, or, or you know, towards the edge of the, uh, of the area because of the fire risk. Um, could it be that it's one of the reception rooms? Nice mosaic in there. Could it be even one of the main living spaces? We, we haven't got quite enough to go on. It might then acquire... Well, and Ben's way, big, shiny, graphic imaginings are all well and good. But they're quite a leap from the reality of the site that so far produced quite a lot of nothing. Although I will admit the structure in the cops has cleaned up pretty well. Oh, Ben, this is it. This is Roman archaeology. <laughs> we can sleep tonight <laughs> yes, after all. Yes, you didn't believe me quite, did you? <laughs> but here we are tessellated pavement, maybe the interior of a room. We've even got what looks like a doorway there, look, worn by people's tread to and fro. And a huge, substantial wall, chalk clunch wall running through here. So no question about it, we've, we've got a big building here. And where do you think it goes? Well, <laughs> yeah, where does it go? We've got a bit of a problem heading in that direction because, of course, Matt's Trench doesn't have anything Roman in it, it appears. We also have to think about how far east does this building go? So what we plan to do tomorrow is to extend, do some test pitting and chart how big this building is in that direction. By the east, you mean into people's gardens? Uh, yeah, I'm afraid so, yeah. We like that, don't we? <laughs> Beginning of day two here in the little Cambridgeshire village of Littlington and we've gone from the sublime to the ridiculous. Yesterday we were trawling through eight acres of that field looking for a lost Roman villa which we couldn't find. So today we're going to be digging there and here and there. Off you go team. These three test pits are just the beginning of a concerted effort to understand what was going on in Roman Littlington. As the only thing we've really established so far is that the gigantic villa recorded in this 1836 plan isn't in this field. But we're pretty sure there's a substantial Roman building nearby because of the evidence Phil's uncovered in the neighbouring cops. Something that big, that is a big foundation, isn't Absolutely. it? Absolutely. a big supporting Absolutely. wall. Absolutely. So Although we originally suspected yeah. this may be a bathhouse, we're now thinking it's a suite of posh rooms. We've placed our trench on the vital intersection of two ranges of one building. We've got where that tessellated pavement is with the brush on is a corridor running through there with rooms leading off from there. And you would come down the corridor, you would turn a corner into this wing and you could go down this corridor and you would then lead off into rooms where Faye is. So, Theoretically, I could walk down this corridor here, open the door, and there I am in Faye's posh room. Absolutely, and they really are posh too, because we've, she's got painted wall plaster that show that they are really the top range uh, rooms of the building. So far, Phil's corner and Faye's plastered wall are the only reliable Roman archaeology we've uncovered. It may not be a lot, but guess what? It's enough for Stuart and Henry to come up with a theory. They've now got walls in, uh, in Phil's and Faye's trenches, so I've yeah. surveyed those in. Now, I have extrapolated those a little bit. Looks to me like they're, they're part of the same plan. They suspect the antiquarians who made this plan did see a massive villa, they just happened to draw it in the wrong place. The alignment of, of that, actually, that, that's the cops you've got in there, and the alignment yeah. of the things you've got there are the same. Yeah, they're, they're going on that same axis. So whether these are related, different building to that, or whether that's a misunderstanding of the antiquarians and really that building was <laughs> was, yeah, was down yeah. there, it's all a bit a bit up in the air at the moment. If Stuart's right and the villa is further south, that would explain why bits of tiled floor were found under these barns 20 years ago. Then again, if the antiquarians got the position of the villa wrong, they may also have got its size wrong. 
<laughs> and that's why the back garden test pits are so important. Uh, nothing Roman at all. Uh, so how much further before you give up and say, well, that's it? <laughs> From this level that I'm on now, um, I would say another foot maybe or so. Yeah, yeah. yeah then you give up. Oh. Then I'll give up, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because if we dig enough holes, we should find the true size and location of the building that's produced so much Roman archaeology over the years. So do you think that's a bit of wall you found there, then? Well, I think we're definitely down to um, some kind of Roman layer. It's vital we uncover as much information as we can, because the antiquarians left virtually no written records about their digs. And yet, surprisingly, many of their finds have survived. You come up here, come and see the dead Roman. You not move back, let the other, let the other children come forward, come see the dead Roman in the box. And thanks to the Antiquities Museum in Cambridge, many of them have been given a day trip back to where they were found. But I bet you'd quite like to drink wine out of something like that. That's a little... That's a little young, aren't they? Wine. Oh, yeah, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, you have outrageous. water in it as well. I'm sure they'd have started off early. So that's a little a wine-drinking cup. Have you ever seen anybody grinding up food in the kitchen? Yeah. yeah. That's for grinding food. So that was once a Roman lady's bowl in the kitchen. She had to stand there and grind her food up. Maybe it broke one day and she chucked it out. This collection of pottery is recorded as coming from the Villa and Grand Roman Cemetery at Littlington. And it would appear from these finds that the history of the cemetery, known locally as Heaven's Walls, and the villa are intimately linked. So we're going to try and find the location of Heaven's Walls. And unfortunately, that means using the map that's already caused us all sorts of trouble. The plant also shows a cemetery area. There are lots of really juicy cemetery finds. There were um, pots, there were objects, all sort of things, even suggestions that something might here be a tomb. So I would suggest that we start at the edge of those back gardens there and do a swathe of geophysics, something like that, between the stubble field and into the ploughed field. That looks about three days' work on its own. <laughs> So Geophys trudge off to another massive field to look for another missing antiquarian site. I'm getting a feeling of deja vu here. This is where Raksha's doing. Hiya. Hello. Hello. Just How's it going? Enjoying my <laughs> tea break. I can see you're, you're really snowed <laughs> under, aren't you? Back up on the main site, our first test pits have had mixed results. We've basically found nothing of note in two of the gardens, but Rakshar's trench has produced something. So we've got this, which looks kind of convincing. Very abraded bit of tessera and plaster. This mix of scrappy bits of plaster and chalk suggests demolition of a nearby Roman building. If I was feeling optimistic, I would say that we're slowly closing in on our target. And that can mean only one thing. Rakshar and our diggers <laughs> moving into new gardens to continue the search for the villa. Should we do it together? No. No? OK. Our villa is over there where those houses are. In fact, quite a lot of it's probably under those houses. But somewhere in this field, we think there might be a rare walled Roman cemetery which would be associated with the villa. Except nobody really knows precisely where it is, do they? Well, I, I think we do now. Oh, there was triumph <laughs> in that tone. <laughs> Why? Well, we've done the magnetic survey. and Look, Ben's got the results here. This ditch here turns through a right angle. And I just wonder whether that could be the boundary of the cemetery. Where would you want to put in a trench? Well, look at the results in detail. This is the ditch I'm talking about. And I'd like to put a trench across that ditch and taking in one of the anomalies inside to see whether we've got a, a sort of pit or maybe even a, a grave cut. So although we're really stretched up at the villa, we're putting in a trench to establish whether or not this is indeed the location of the Heaven's Wall Cemetery. Just one little second. It, it's tiny, but it does look like a little beady rim there, and that could mm -hmm. easily be a little Roman pot. Job done. <laughs> 
I think John's self-confidence is a little misplaced. We've still got a long way to go to match the quality of the antiquarian finds from the cemetery, because none of them were damaged by later industrial ploughing. Here we've got a very early piece of Samian ware, made in Gaul. It's right from the early part of the Roman occupation. Very unusual to find that complete, but I can see that being used as the lid to a cremation urn, which they very often were. These are probably grave goods too, for um, libations or food for a grave. Then we've got the Samian cup, which is probably a grave good holding wine or liquid or something for the deceased. They really are in very good condition, those vessels, aren't they? They're exceptionally good. And just imagine if we'd been able to excavate this site ourselves 200 years ago. This is probably the sort of material we'd have found. Unfortunately, we can only dream of making such discoveries. But back in the cops, there's been a breakthrough. And Phil now thinks he is digging a bathhouse. But now we got down here, we've got this concrete type block in here. Now this is, um, well, I'm sure it's in situ. It's not a piece of loose debris. I'm wondering, because it's in a hole, whether I'm in one of the pools of a bathhouse. Well, let me hop in here. <coughs> so, so, I mean, you're close to the sort of, you know, the mosaic floor behind you, which is, you know, what you'd expect near to, to that sort of structure within, within a villa. And you've got, I mean, it's definitely, yeah, I mean, it's definitely sort of, you know, we say brick stroke tile. So what you're trying to say is, I think you are right, Phil. I think you do have a bath house. You might be right, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> Let's hope so. <laughs> Even if this is a bath house, it would still suggest that there's a fairly posh home or villa nearby. So it would look like our discoveries are tying up quite nicely with the fancy Roman pottery uncovered almost 200 years ago. But this being time team, there's always somebody around to throw a spanner in the archaeological works. Guy, you've got severe doubts about whether all of the finds from the cemetery actually are from the cemetery. Yeah, I've got to admit I have. I mean, let's, let's just paint that picture. You know, jump back 200 years' time and you've got the Reverend so-and-so round in Littlington and he's known as the local antiquarian or whatever and various people have found bits round here and they say, oh, Mr Reverend so I found this in my back garden in my field. You'd probably enjoy having this in your collection. And he said, oh, thank you very much. And it all goes into a box and he sticks it in his glass cabinet and shows it off to his friends and everything else. You jump on about 50 or 60 years and the Reverend so-and-so has popped his clogs and, of course, his collection gets boxed up and some well-meaning person sends it off to Cambridge Museum with a label in it or something like that. Jump on a hundred years to Mr Tony Robinson and Time Team and these finds are looked at, by which time, of course, it's all got jumbled up and probably the case is that some of these pots come from here but probably a lot of them come from other finds around here. They're all over the place in date terms, so, you know, who knows? So we could be making assumptions about this place on the back of the finds and actually we're making totally wrong assumptions. Yeah, we're just forgetting about the fact that a huge amount of things and events and people have been involved in the last 180 years. Everything from all the building work around here to bits of paper blowing across in cabinets and therefore things getting mislabeled, jumbled up and mixed up. So maybe antiquarian enthusiasm has clouded our knowledge of this site. Oh, Governor, I found, I found this pot in my back garden. Why don't you have that in your collection? And his wife says, oh, I've got one too. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. And even without the dodgy accents, yeah. we shouldn't rely too much on that it's antiquarian so evidence. Like the, the pit is there. Yeah. Yeah. Then we've got much the... better to rely on the evidence we've uncovered in the trenches. Or the apparent lack of evidence in the case of the cemetery. I mean, could this be where they're just digging for gravel? Yeah, and this being the backfill, the stuff that they didn't want. Possibly. It could be. We now have archaeologists all over Littlington, turning the village upside down. But we still haven't found any other major Roman structure outside of the cops. But right down the bottom here, we've got part of one of the baths that they would have got into which we're now fairly sure is indeed a bathhouse. Where I'm standing now would have been quite a big open room with certainly a pool in here. When uh, you say baths, Phil, you don't mean baths like we have, do you? I don't mean a six-foot bath with taps at the end, no. The, the, the Romans had very, very special ways of having baths. They had at least three rooms, and it was a real, a real ritual. They all used to bath together, 
and often they didn't get cleaned out all that much and they would shave in the bath and all the hairs would be floating uh, on, the, on the surface <laughs> and there'd be all manky soap on the surface as well and then eventually they'd have to get some poor slave would come in and scrape all this stuff off. It's a bit like my bath at home, actually. <laughs> yeah, I, you, nobody ever told me that you had to empty it. <laughs> a little bit too much information there. We've got one of, of 1887, so that sort of gives us a, a, a time stamp of what was on the map at that time. So if we use those... But although we only have the bathhouse at the minute, Stuart thinks he's getting closer to finding the rest of the villa. Roman villa, so they put a cross where they think it is, and they've also put another cross here saying Roman payment hypercourse found in AD 1881, quite specific. Yeah. If you take the positions of those and transfer them to the modern map, which I've done, the site of the villa actually falls, that cross falls in the back garden just adjacent to the copse there, and the other one, the hypercourse, it falls just there which is in the back garden of number two Anvil Avenue. So you can see they're both very close to each other and very close to, to the cops where we're finding material too. And would you believe it, he may actually be right. Over there are the three houses with the back gardens into which we put the test pits this morning. And unfortunately, we drew a blank. But in this back garden, there is a trench which if you are interested in archaeology, you just love to have in your garden. John, is that what I think it is? Uh, yes, tessellated floor. Does it look like the one in Phil's trench? Uh, yes, it's just like the one in Phil's trench, really. It's the sort of coarse tessery you see in these Roman buildings, so... How far away do you reckon his trench is? Well, we're probably a good 30 to 40 metres away from Phil, where he is now. So it's not the same building? Well, it, it could be the same building, could well be. It just means a bigger building. This is a small but major breakthrough. So we're now going to extend this trench. But not half as much as we're going to extend our investigation in the cops. Oh, ah, uh, get him in. And that means weeding on an industrial scale. We've now got just one day to get to the bottom of Roman Littlington. You want to come and have a look and see what we've done to your wood? <laughs> what have you done to our Well, we've just given it a bit of daylight, you see. You've got to put a bit of daylight in here. Let's just hope the locals are still talking to us by this time tomorrow. Beginning of day three here on this baffling site at Littlington in Cambridgeshire where we're looking for a Roman villa which we can't find and a Roman cemetery which we can't find either and the one tangible piece of archaeology we've got seems to have changed character three times over the last 36 hours and it's not that I want to add any more tension to the mix it's just that in seven hours time I've got to explain the whole site to the entire village and frankly at the moment I wouldn't even know where to start. Which is why we're throwing everything we have at this site, with countless trenches in back gardens and fields all around the village. But at the moment, the only thing we're really sure about is the bathhouse we've uncovered in the piece of scorched earth that used to be a copse. I'll say, Master Philip, this looks like a bit of an ex-cops this morning. <laughs> I want your opinion. Come on in here a minute. My opinions are free. No, well, that's a... why I want your opinion, because <laughs> you don't charge as much as anybody else. <laughs> now, look, through here, you've got more of this almost fired clay. We've been calling that the bath. It's in a hypercourse, is it? This split arrangement. Where's the Roman floor level? The Roman floor level's there, we've got the mosaics on it. And so it's a couple it. of feet higher than this? Oh yeah, well you can see right. where the floor is. So that might be the original floor surface on a hypercourse that's fallen through. Could that be? I don't know, I'm asking you. At the moment, Phil suspects that at some point, the original floor of this building, which may or may not have been a plunge pool, had a hypercourse, a heated floor system built on top of it. So far, so good. There obviously has got to be a hypercoaster. Logically, there's got to be a hypercoaster in here somewhere. Only if there's, it is a bathhouse. 
And we don't absolutely know that for certain, do we? Oh dear. We've it been might be. <laughs> but Tony's gonna love this when we change our opinions yet again. He no. knew we would. I think for his own personal sanity and mine, Phil may have to stop asking our Romanists for their opinions. And in the absence of any conclusive decision, he's going to just keep on digging. Where do you find these tests, Ray, then? Just, we just found them in this, this corner here, what, just like, in this corner, that? yes. We've also continued to put test pits in gardens that produced Roman finds. Is this mostly Roman that's coming up, would you say? It looks like there's another piece of tesserae. Oh, yes, brilliant. Right there. Oh, fantastic. And this game of archaeological battleships is beginning to give us a rough idea of how big an area a Roman building could have covered here. But the thing is, if they saw such a massive villa in that area, why can't we find it? <laughs> and it doesn't really tie up with the grand plan the antiquarians drew. It makes you wonder if they found a massive villa or they found a bit of Roman stuff here and a bit of Roman stuff there and a bit of Roman stuff there and started to make a villa out of not very much. Yeah, there's still, there's still Roman, bits of Roman stuff coming out of there. I just had a piece of tile out of it. And if dealing with one antiquarian site wasn't enough, there's the small matter of the walled cemetery that we suspect may be associated with our Roman building. Jackie, can I come in? Yeah, sure, come down the stairs. What is it you've got? Well, we know that in this field, this cemetery was discovered in about 1820 by gravel quarry diggers. Um, and they found the cemetery, the antiquarians came in, they dug out what they wanted, and they carried on digging gravel out of here for quite some time. And then they would have backfilled everything they the holes they'd left behind. And I was getting really despondent yesterday because we weren't finding any bits of material at all. And fantastically this morning, at about this level here, I turned up a whole load of human bone. Oh, fantastic. We've got bits of femur and bits of tibia with the leg bones. And even better, we had a piece of pottery turnip which has been dated at late late Iron Age, early Romano British. So you're sure they're Roman bones? Yeah, this is, this is what they left behind of the, of the material from the cemetery that they didn't want to take away. John, looks like you were right. There's a cemetery here after all. Yeah, we knew it was here. It had to be on the basis of our results. Don't crow. <laughs> no. <laughs> what we've done this morning is expand our survey back in this field. Now, you remember yesterday we had this ditch that turned through a right angle. Now you can see it extending and it's starting to form a really big enclosure. You can actually see some detail. Now, look at that point there. Have we got a little square enclosure with a pit inside mm. and a circular wall beyond? Are we looking at a mausoleum? So we're gonna put it in another trench? We've got to. So we're putting in one final trench over John's potential mausoleum, as it would be fantastic to establish that at least one Roman tomb has survived the 18th century gravel quarrying. This is, looks pretty solid. Here's the wall. Yeah. That's solid, it's coming down. Solid, solid. I think that might be the base of something. So it would seem that we may have at last uncovered some solid evidence of the Roman cemetery. And with only a few hours to go, it looks like we may have finally got a handle on this blasted villa. Oh, you got your floor surface here. Really? Yeah. <laughs> Look in that corner. See how much more solid that is. Oh, yeah. It looks like Ben's test pit strategy is at last paying off. So, thanks to a lot of hard graft, determination and countless cups of tea, we're finally beginning to work out how much of Littlington is built on top of the villa. Thank heavens I've found you, Raksha. I feel like a door-to-door -door salesman going through <laughs> these gardens. What have you got there? Oh, Stu, I've persevered for two days now. This is the third garden I've been in. Yeah. And this is the first, third test pit I've done. And I've, I've actually come up with the goods. Oh, wow. <laughs> what have you got? I found this amazing robbed-out oh, wall, right. which is exactly what we were looking for. And this is definitely in situ, and you're confident it's a Roman period wall? Yes. We've had lots and lots of Roman finds coming out of here. That is so nice, because this is your test pit 
in here. Yeah. The blue dots and wa walls, or whether actually got good Roman buildings still sitting in their original position in the ground. The orange zones are where we've got spreads of demolition rubble showing there are walls and, and things nearby. Now that actually starts to make sense. If you take a, a corridor villa with two wings, and this is one that's not that far from here really, mm. and if you put it over here, it fits quite nicely with stuff in situ there, stuff in situ here, corridor going across that way, oriented to the south, which is exactly what you'd expect. I think you deserve a, a nice cream for your perseverance. You know? <laughs> <laughs> so with more pieces of the jigsaw falling into place, we can begin to put some of Littlington back together again. That's going to go, oh, is that going to carry on? Yes, it is, look. Although it may take some bits longer to recover. Bless them, when they dug it in the 20th century, the early 20th century, they just smashed their way through it. Jackie? Hello. Can you come over here for a sec? Back down at the cemetery, it now looks like the antiquarians and gravelers didn't completely destroy the Roman burial ground. Oh, what timing. Well, even I can tell that's a human skull there. Yeah. There was also, in there... Ah. Oh. That. Yes, that looks awfully like a coffin nail, mm. doesn't it? Yes. Yeah. This is intact, in yep. situ. It's not redeposited. Mm -hmm. This is where the guy went in. Um, we've got somebody laid on their left side, mm -hmm. face, facing that direction. With Matt's trench confirming the presence of the mausoleum shown in John's Geophys, it's probably safe to suggest at least one or two other graves may also survive beneath this field. I think we can safely call that a result. Any ideas where it could be? <laughs> the one time in my life when I need a Romanist and there's never one here. But even at this late stage, the Romanists are continuing to frustrate Phil's quest for a final decision on what's in the cops. What is going on? Well, I don't know. That's why you're you're here to tell me. <laughs> right, OK. Well, knowing what's happening in a bathhouse that hasn't been dug by someone and one that's obviously been dug into and, and elements removed, elements explored, taken away. That, that's, that's two different things, really, isn't it? I mean, it, is a, it, is a, it is a bit of a, a blow to the stomach, though. I mean, we've shifted a lot of muck today and, and, and we've worked hard. And, and at the end of the day, to turn round after all that graft and say we haven't got the foggiest idea, that's a bitter pill to swallow. I don't think we're saying we haven't got the foggiest well, idea. Well, you know, that's what you were saying to me, isn't it? What, 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 what is I'm it I'm saying then? it in what is it more then? words. What is it then? The fact is no one knew what was here until three days ago. No one knew and no one had made a proper and record now of it. you were saying we still don't know. No, no, we've made a proper document. <laughs> no, I'm not saying that. We've, we've pinned down a range of possibilities. Ah! And and that is eminently better than having not the foggiest idea. We've got thick deposits of, of plaster and, and it looks like they've made a concerted effort to make some of these rooms perhaps watertight or at least to consolidate them. So is this a bathhouse? Yes. Well, there we go then. I'm happy with that. <laughs> so, possibly with a gun to his head, Ben's finally decided that this is a bathhouse. So has this come from more than one room, or from one room, or can't you say? Uh, it looks to me like it's probably come from one room. And as the plaster we've uncovered in Stephen and Hillary's cops suggests, it was once a rather plush suite of rooms. Roman walls are incredibly lurid by mm -hmm. our standards. They're very deep, heavy, hard colours that I think we would find very oppressive. You'd walk in there and be really quite sort of crushed. You'd probably feel really claustrophobic in a Roman room. But we do know that the Romans painted these very distinct zones on the walls. It tends to have a kind of a bottom third, and then above that a series of vertical panels, in which would normally have been some sort of much more decorative picture, perhaps a mythological scene or maybe a goddess. And had the antiquarians found any bits of wall plaster that had such a figure on it, they would undoubtedly have taken, taken it away. This finely decorated bathhouse would have been a focus for any villa. And thanks to the results from the test pits and the bits of radar John could get from the back gardens, we think that the villa would have sat roughly in the area now occupied by these houses. But truthfully, that's about it. 
We can't really say what the villa looked like or what its relationship is to the cemetery we've discovered. And yet most of us feel we've still learned more about Roman Littlington in three days than all the previous antiquarian excavations. We've got now a fantastic record for the first time where these walls actually are. For the first time, not just a rumour of a bathhouse and a couple of lines in a scrappy document. We've yeah. actually pinned down where the walls are, on what alignment they are. Nevertheless, goose, wild and chase <laughs> are words which spring to my mind, although not necessarily in that order. I will admit there have been certain difficulties with pinning this one down. <laughs> um, but that's partly the fault of, of following this antiquarian. But importantly, we've been trying to tread in their steps. Just what is it that they saw? And I think we're now getting to grips with that. We're starting to see it properly as they saw it. They left no documents. You see, well, I think well, almost everyone thinks we've done better. I just can't get over this. We're, we're all so smug and self-satisfied. There's nothing worse than a gang of modern-day self-righteous archaeologists banging on about the Beelzebubs <laughs> sent down from Hades who dug up and destroyed these sites a couple of hundred years ago. Along we come, these saints, the sun glazing on us from Apollo. We're so wonderful <laughs> and perfect. What's going to happen in a couple of hundred years' time is that people are going to be looking at the kind of records we're churning out, GPS, with what satellite? What, the one that burnt up in the atmosphere 150 years ago that we can no longer possibly calibrate? Oh, it's all recorded on this nice little bit of plastic. Oh, oh, well, we haven't had a drive for one of those for the last two centuries. At least with the antiquarians, you can read the words they wrote. Well, and you don't think we're going to generate a, a documentary record that, that's more impressive than this? I, I'm not sorry, in, that's... Not, a, in, two, not that, in 200 that, years' that time. That shows a complete lack of faith. We, we yes, have I'm got... <laughs> Much as I'd love to listen to this mature discussion for the next few hours... We could talk, because we could have just had that and a blazing three-dimensional multicoloured hologram. I've got an appointment with a few of the locals. Or maybe more than a few who are now keen to know what we've done with Littlington's villa. It is the whole village, isn't it? <laughs> I said the whole village. I thought they were joking. Welcome, welcome. Can you see the robust Roman walls? Yep. Which. No. <laughs> you can't see them? No. no. So you may think that the great villa of Littlington doesn't exist. But we'd like to show you something else. Come over this way. It's been a frustrating and at times an infuriating three days here, but at least the people of Littlington now know what was going on here almost 2,000 years ago. We do know that in parts of this building there were some really expensive floors. We found not. And in spite of some people's misgivings, I have to say, this site proves the benefits of digging into the past. You do have a villa, we believe it's under there, and you have a bathhouse which hopefully generations of children will be able to visit and learn more about the Romans from. So, thanks ever so much for coming and we had a good time, I hope you did too. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you.